Good morning to all our viewers and to our listeners. Welcome to our church service online. We trust that you'll be wonderfully blessed this morning. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this moment. We thank you for a brand new day. And we pray that as we spend some time in your presence and around your word, we would have a strong, clear sense of direction this morning. Come and renew our minds. Come and minister life to us this morning. That we will never be the same again. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, it's wonderful having you connecting with us this morning from different homes. And we trust that you, again, you will be wonderfully blessed. We're running a series on a Sunday morning entitled Attractive Authority. And this morning we're dealing with part eight. And again, we, we're trying to understand what does attractive authority look like? What what can develop our voice of authority in the world that we're living in that we can stand out from the crowd and be a lighthouse to this world? Well, again, we've been extracting wonderful principles out of a portion of scripture, out of the book of Philippians chapter 2 and from verse 5. So let's pick it up from verse 5 once again. It says in verse 5, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. So I want to highlight again this morning, it says here, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And again, we understand that an attitude is a product of our thoughts, the way we see life, our perception on life. And so the way we see life will develop eventually an attitude that we have towards life. And so this morning, if we can just understand the way of how Jesus thought when he walked on earth, and then we will understand his attitude, we can follow in his footsteps. It says in verse 7 that Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. And so again, we've come to understand that the best model for you and I to follow today that can develop attractive authority in our lives is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And the only way to do that is to study the life of Jesus when he walked on earth. And so as we see him in human flesh, we will find those wonderful key principles that would develop attractive authority in our lives. We've been specifically looking at the word authority and breaking it up letter by letter. And each letter has stood for a quality that if we can develop that quality in our lives, we will develop attractive authority. So again, just to recap this morning, if we look at the letter A, the letter A stands for being approachable. And we've come to understand that in the life of Jesus and in his ministry, Jesus as an attractive leader, with attractive authority, he was approachable, winning the right to influence. If we look at the letter U, the letter U stands for understanding, living with the eyes of consideration. That again, in the life of Jesus, we found that Jesus walked around with great understanding towards people, and that developed attractive authority. The letter T stood for being teachable, being quick to listen, slow to speak. And again, in the life of Jesus, we could find that he was always teachable. If we look at the letter H, the letter H stood for being humble, that the way up is actually down. And again, in the life of Jesus, we find true humility. And then last Sunday, we dealt with the letter O. And the letter O stands for overcoming. That we need to learn to master it and not to be mastered by it. And again, in the life of Jesus, Jesus was one who always overcame. He overcame all the challenges that came before him. So this morning, we're going to look at the next letter, and that is the letter R. And I want the letter R this morning to stand for being respectful. You know, good manners can open great doors. And it's just saying the thank yous asking correctly, dealing with people in a polite way, 
can really open wonderful doors for us to influence the world around us. So I want us again to look at that word respectful this morning, understanding that this word was found in the life of Jesus. When you study the ministry and the life of Jesus, Jesus was a leader that respected people around him. He dealt with people in a very respectful way. And when you and I today can deal with each other in a respectful way, we will develop attractive authority. If you look at the word respectful, the word respectful simply means to show polite submission and respect to people around you. If we look at the word respect, it's to show due regard for the feelings and wishes or rights of others. And so we need to learn how to deal with each other respectfully and simply not to be rude. And again, if we look around the world today, let's be honest with each other. People have become rude towards each other. People have become abrupt. People are no longer considerate, no longer well-mannered, no longer considerate, no longer thoughtful, no longer attentive to each other's needs. It's become a very self-centered environment today. It's about what can I gratify myself with? What can be for my own pleasure? What can I gain out of this experience? But attractive authority walk around with respect towards each other. Jesus was respectful. And I'm going to just pick out some stories. And the, and the Bible is so full of stories, especially if we read through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you study the life of Jesus, you will find that he was a very respectful leader. If you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 51 to 52, I read this scripture last Sunday, and I think it's really appropriate for today as well. It says in verse 51, Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Who is this? Jesus went down to Nazareth with his parents and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now, as much as Jesus was the son of God, God with us in human flesh, yet he chose to be obedient to his parents. He was respectful to his parents' wishes. That as much as he was the son of God, but as a child growing up in his parents' household, he chose to be respectful towards his parents. And just out of respect and walking in obedience to them, the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. You know, when you, when you and I walk with favor with God and man, doors open up for us. And, you know, so often we, we look at that individual and we wonder, how was it possible for doors to open up for them? And many times it's just simply good manners. Good manners can open up great doors of opportunity. And here we find that Jesus was so respectful towards his parents. Though he was again God with us and he knew all things, he chose to humble himself. So that he could teach us how to develop attractive authority that wins favor with God and man. It says in John chapter 19 and verse 26 that even when Jesus was on the cross and in his final few hours with us. It says in verse 26 that when Jesus saw his mother Mary at the cross and his disciple whom he loved standing nearby, which was John, he said to him, woman. Here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. It's amazing that as a child growing up, he was very respectful towards his parents. That even at the end of his ministry, while dying on the cross, he remained respectful to his mother Mary. Didn't abandon her. Didn't leave her at the point of death. Abandoned and alone. Instead, even in those Last few hours, he connected his mother, Mary, to a disciple called John and to ensure that there was someone to look after her, even in his absence. Again, how respectful is that? That even in the, in the stench and the smell of death, Jesus remains respectful towards his 
Mother Mary. In Luke uh, chapter 20 and verse 20, we let's pick it up together. Keeping a close watch on him, the Pharisees, the, the religious leaders, sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and the authority of the governor. So the spies questioned Jesus, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose image and inscription is on this coin. Caesar's, they replied. So Jesus said to them, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. What, what, what is Jesus really saying? Give the respect to Caesar that is due to Caesar, and give the respect to God that is due to God. In this case, this coin, whose inscription is on it? Caesar. So let's be respectful and let's give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Verse 26. They were unable to trap Jesus in what he said there in public. And astonished by his answer, they became silent. Now Jesus was in a public arena that day and they tried to trap him in what he said. But they could not do that because Jesus chose in that moment in the public arena to remain respectful. You know, I see people today being very rude. I see leaders walking around with titles, walking around in positions of authority, that even in a public arena, they almost develop a no-care attitude to what people think and will say about them. So even in a public arena, they can be so careless with their words. Yet Jesus teaches us that in a public arena to remain respectful. Luke 21, another story. Apart from Jesus paying respect to the governor, now we find him in a different environment, in a different context. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 1, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. So here's the situation. The rich putting in huge amounts of money into the offering. And here we find a poor widow putting in two very small copper coins. I wonder how attentive is Jesus going to be in this moment? How thoughtful will he be in this moment as a leader? In verse 3, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. What was Jesus doing? He was respectfully treating this poor widow with dignity. That even though in, in, in monetary value, she put in such less amount versus the others. But Jesus respectfully brought people's attention to take note of how she gave all she had to live on. Jesus was attentive, thoughtful, and considerate to this poor widow. And again, what respectful authority. Mark chapter 1 and verse 40. Here we find a man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now again, we must understand that a leper in his world is seen as unclean. Whenever a leper would walk towards a crowd of people, the crowd of people would shout out, unclean, unclean. And so people would ensure that they separate themselves from a leper. No one would touch a leper. Can you imagine that leper feeling like an outcast in his community, totally rejected by everyone? No one having the time of the day to spend with him. No one wanting to talk to a leper, no one wanting to touch a leper. And this leper reaches out to Jesus. I wonder, what did Jesus do? As an attractive leader, so far we've come to understand that Jesus showed respect to the governor. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. 
Jesus showed respect to a widow who put in only two small copper coins. How is Jesus going to handle this moment in a public arena? Verse 41. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left this man and he was cleansed. What was the first thing that Jesus did? Jesus did not say, be clean. And once he was cured of leprosy, then Jesus touched him. No, Jesus touched him while he still had leprosy. Jesus touched that skin diseased area to show this leper in a dignified manner that I still respect you as a human being. I respect you no matter what disease you are carrying right now. I'm out of compassion. You know, a lot of people today have lost a heart of compassion towards each other. They're no longer kind. They're no longer considerate. They're no longer well-mannered. They don't ask their parents correctly, please can I have this or thank you for this. They don't, there's no longer a considerate approach towards your spouse. I've seen husbands become exceptionally rude towards their wives. Wives become very rude towards their husbands. And it just becomes a vicious circle. We live in a world where people are no longer operating with compassion towards each other. You know, when you and I have compassion towards each other, we will be respectful towards each other. Matthew 26, even towards the end of Jesus' ministry, we see Jesus being respectful even towards his father because he came to fulfill his father's will. And it says here in Matthew 26 that when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, struggling and wrestling with the reality that he was about to die on a cross and drink of a, of a cup and take on the sin of mankind, that he was in a moment of wrestling with, should I still do it? And it says in Matthew 26 verse 39, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Is there another way around this? Do I still need to die on the cross and take upon me the sin of mankind? Yet not as I will, but as you will. I will still be respectful, Father. I'm not here about myself. I'm here about your business. I'm here to fulfill what you commissioned me to do, and that is to die for the sins of the world. It says in verse 42, he went away a second time and he prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. You know, when you and I become respectful towards each other, you know, earlier on when we looked at its definition, it spoke about polite submission. You know, we will struggle to submit to each other when we no longer respect each other. And so we need to learn how to develop a healthy respect towards each other so that we can walk in the footsteps of Jesus and develop that attractive authority that Jesus had a way of being respectful to those in authority, to the poor, to the outcast, to the sick, and still respectful to his father's will for his life. We can learn a lot from the life of Jesus if you and I want to develop attractive authority because Jesus walked around with such attractive authority. So this morning, before I close, I want to highlight a few scriptures around the word respect because the Bible is very clear when we speak about respect. It says in the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3, Each of you must respect your mother and father and you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. In the midst of respect your mother and your father, just remember, I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19 verse 32. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly. And revere your God. I am the Lord. It's amazing how showing respect towards each other, we must never forget God is present. God is watching. God is listening to everything we're saying and doing. And we need to respect our parents and yet here, yeah, respect the aged. 
You know, I grew up in a generation that when an elderly person walked in, you stand up and you greet them. You don't greet them with a grunt. You don't greet them with a hmm. You greet them with words. Good morning. How are you? Show respect. Good manners. Saying a thank you. Saying the please. Saying I am sorry. Good manners can open great doors. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 says that a leader, an elder, must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? Good manners at home will develop good manners in the work environment, in a leadership in opportunity, in a public place. We need to learn. It starts at home before it goes into the workplace. Let us learn to be respectful in our homes. What Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 says, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. It says in verse 12 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work. Live in peace with each other. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as their heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. Why must we be so respectful so that nothing will hinder your prayers, that even your prayer life, to, for it to be effective, walk around with a respectful attitude towards those around you. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17 says, Show proper respect, proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. So even here, we, as we bring these scriptures to a close this morning, it's very clear, it's very loud, that we ought to respect everyone. Just as Jesus modeled it as a leader with attractive authority, he modeled a respectful attitude towards those in authority, to the poor, to the sick, in his relationship with his father. So we too, in our marriages, in our homes, as leaders, wherever we go, in whatever context we find ourselves in, we should be showing proper respect. We should be respectful to all around us. Good manners can open great doors. So this morning as I close, how do I walk respectfully? How do I do this? Well, number one, careful of familiarity. We can become so familiar with each other that we no longer respect each other. And out of familiarity, we can become very rude. We take each other for granted. We don't say the please and the thank yous and the sorries. We don't stand up. We don't open the necessary doors. You know, husband's amazing. When you first met your wife, you opened the door for her to climb into the car. Do you still respectfully open the door to let her climb into the vehicle? We, we lose all those good manners that we once had and we get caught up in the clutter and the pace of life and everything becomes about ourselves. Let's be respectful and careful of familiarity towards your boss, familiarity towards those in authority, familiarity towards your parents. They're not your old mom and old persons before you. They're your mom and they're your dad. And it's not the man upstairs. It's God Almighty who sits on his throne. Don't become so familiar with God that we can become disrespectful. Secondly, how do you walk respectfully? Careful of partiality. I've seen as soon as we show favoritism, then we're going to disrespect one and show respect to the other. Careful of partiality. Number three, careful of false humility. A lot of people try and walk around showing good manners, but with the wrong motives in their heart. They seem to come across very humble, but it's actually false humility because out of self-centeredness, they're trying to gain the approval of everyone around them. 
So they're trying to show respect, but what they're really trying to do is gain approval, gain recognition, gain, gain praise of man. So careful, when you and I are walking respectfully, careful of familiarity, careful of partiality, careful of false humility. And why must I remain respectful? You may ask this as we close this morning. Why? Well, if you sow it, you will reap it. You want to develop attractive authority where people can respect your voice of authority. People can respect your leadership. Well, the best thing you can do it is when you are respectful, you sow respect, you will reap respect. Secondly, respect will gain receptiveness. You want people to receive from you. You want people to listen to you. You want people to follow you, submit to you. Well, the key is, as you show respect to others and people can feel that they are being respected, they will open up and receive from you. Did you hear that? They will open up and receive from you. Why? Because good manners can open up great doors. And finally, why must I remain respectful? Because it will strengthen and grow all your relationships. It will strengthen your marriage. It will strengthen your relationship with your children, with your parents, with your boss at work. It will strengthen every relationship in your life when you and I learn to show proper respect to everyone. I hope that this again has helped you this morning as we are developing attractive authority in us when you look at the life of jesus his attitude was one of showing respect to those around him may we too walk with great respect to those around us may we be respectful today as we develop attractive authority thank you for spending this time with us god richly bless you